Hi, this is Dark Fox on Two Seven, and welcome to another Skyrim Creation Geek tutorial video. Today, we're going to be working with creating our very own spell. So, I have done a video previous to this where I showed how to do magic effects. So, I'm not going to go through that again in this video. I will simply pick a few magic effects from the sort of endless lists and put them together in a spell and show you that working at the end. And while we're creating the spell, I will obviously explain what certain things do. So, we are going under Magic and Spell. Alternate click and new. When you're making a spell, you're usually best off just creating it from scratch. Um, I think I mentioned with the magic effects that you're probably better off duplicating one and tweaking it. That's not the case with spells, you're better off making one from scratch because it's a lot simpler as you can see. So, ID, we're going to give it, it's just going to be DF127 new spell, how very creative, and call this epic spell whatever you like so the type is going to be for this I'll just pick normal spell but there are a number of different ones so this is also used for creating sort of powers lesser powers sort of shouts if you like so I'll go down here and show you what each of these do you can also do abilities and abilities in the game are obviously constant on a character so if you want your character to have a constant ability in a sort of custom race maybe, then this is where you'd make that sort of ability by using a spell system. So create your own spell, that would be an ability and you'd add it on that way. I'm not going to show how to do that in this video, but that's what ability is. Addiction, that's not really used in the game. Disease is pretty obvious, it's the effects for whatever disease you want to make if you're creating your very own. Lesser power, we know what lesser powers are. Those are powers which can be used a number of times a day and aren't limited to once, like sort of uh, your main powers are. So these, these are pretty useful and they'll be activated via the shout button, same as you'd be shouting. Poison, I'm not entirely sure what use that has for spells because that's usually judged by just magic effect placed on, say, potions and stuff like that. Power, like I said, that's your sort of activated with your shout button again and that's a once per day sort of power so your spell if you select that option your spell will only be able to be used once a day spell like I said it's what we're going to be using for this one nice and simple that's just your average spell and your voice power if you're making your very own shout now I'm not going to go through sort of shouts at all how you would make your own audio and stuff for shouts and your three different setups for it. I'm not going to go through that. That would be a, a tutorial for another day. So, spell is what we're going to have for this one. Casting, we sort of go through this in my magic effect tutorial and I'll just recover it quickly. Uh, your casting is how it's going to work. So it's going to be fire forget, constant effect or concentration, all pretty self-explanatory. Uh, for this one I'm going to use fire and forget and you will have to make sure that your magic effect that you do create is going to match this because if you make a fire and forget magic effect and you go to use constant effect and you right click a new to add a magic effect in it's not going to appear in the list the only ones that are going to appear in this list is for what you've selected under the casting type and the delivery type so that's the other thing that i covered in the magic effect tutorial aimed is obviously wherever your crosshair is aiming and it's going to aim and hit that exact location Contact is going to be as it hits the actor, so it might be one that you have to sort of move right up to the actor and hit them specifically. A self is going to hit the caster, which is usually the player, or could be an NPC who's using it. Target actor is going to specify sort of where you're aiming the closest actor should get hit. Target location is when you're hitting something like the ground, so if you were conjuring up a a conjurable creature like a flame atronoc then it's going to be that exact location on the landscape so you need to set all that up so when you make your magic effect or if you're just going to use base ones which we're going to do for this normal sort of vanilla ones from the game you have to keep that in mind that you set these up correctly so i'll put fire and forget and i'm going to have this as an aimed spell menu display object i don't think i mentioned this in my magic effects tutorial so i'm quickly going to mention it your menu display object is the pretty sort of effect image that you get uh, when you look in your spells menu. And say if it's a, a banished one, you've got that nice sort of purpley glowy thing. Or if it's a candlelight spell and you've got a, a lit up blue sort of Azora style effect, it's going to be that. And if you select 
one in your magic effect so if we went with say the paralysis magic display object and that's the, the sort of green effect if we select that and then we go into our spell and we leave it as none it's going to use this one and it's going to you or it's going to use the one for whatever magic effect if you've got multiple it's going to use whatever one comes first it's going to use the menu display object of that one and the same goes for any of these sort of hit shaders and chant arts and chant shaders uh, the top magic effect is usually the one whose visual effects are applied and the other one just does its usual sort of uh, you know whatever it does sort of effects and the sounds are usually used off the first as well if that makes sense so if you don't state a menu display object here then it's going to use the one from the top of magic effect and if you do state one here this is going to overwrite any that are set in the magic effect so I usually do it here on my spell so I'll say Madge, I'm going to use the banish one equip type well you can have this both hands either hand left hand right hand uh, potion and shield aren't generally used I don't think and voice is what you're going to need for your shout if you're making your own shout but I'm just going to say both hands I'm not going to restrict it at all oh no sorry either hands that would be very restrictive casting perk is an interesting one this is whether a specific perk is going to affect how powerful or how long the spell might go on for so if you say when you get to destruction so when you get to destruction adept then you can select that and when you hit that sort of perk or you get that perk then it's going to start sort of doubling up or do whatever that that perk does it's going to affect this spell so if you don't want any perks to affect how powerful this spell is you always want it to stay the same have it as none but I, th I think I'll set this one to just destruction range is usually when you're doing sort of stuff like target location and you need to decide how many feet it can sort of stretch so it's usually used mostly for conjuration so how far away you can conjure a creature and we want to keep that as just aimed for my spell now these aren't used all that much but disallow spell absorb reflect isn't used at all ignore resistance this is if you have say if you're making a fire spell and you don't want this spell to be affected by sort of people having resistance to fire if you want it to just blast straight through that and that not make a difference then you can go ahead and tick that area effect ignores loss that's something to do with whether the spell is still going to work if you're not sort of in visual distance of the target so if you're not looking at the target I don't usually use that I'll leave that as it is PC start spell that isn't usually used either uh, no dual cast modifications when you go into your magic effect I think this is something I also didn't mention uh, in that tutorial previous uh, dual casting all based around adding more power when you dual cast your spell uh, so if you don't want any of that to work then you tick that box so if you want it to stay the same sort of amount of power being hit uh, the effects well this is where we can go ahead and add them but first i'm just going to cover sort of auto calculate and the description uh, the description how i mentioned the menu display object would overwrite anything that the magic effect has set this is the same for the description so if you have a magic effect here and it's got its own magic description if you don't type anything on your spell here it's going to use this one or whatever the top one is now if you do want to just overwrite if you've got a number of magic effects and they've all got their own descriptions you just want to type one up that sums them all up then you can type it in there uh, we'll just put this spell is epic and then you'll see that it doesn't use any description off the magic effects that we use effects we're going to go new and I'm just going to do something nice and boring I'm just going to do some fire damage aimed then you'll have your magnitude duration area areas dimmed out because it all depends on what you set on your magic effects so uh, if this had an, an area sort of set up to it, then it'd be available to us magnitude I'm just going to put it as 10 and duration it's going to go on for 10 seconds no area and conditions are quite interesting if you know how to work around with conditions so oh, yes to all if you get any errors if you just want to get that the target is a specific gender you could do that but you'd have to set it as say target and get that they're male or female you could do anything like that you could get to see if they are a specific type of creature 
Uh, that can also be done in the magic effects conditions there as well, but unless you're doing something really complicated, you don't usually need that. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. I'm going to go New. And we're going to add another effect where we're just going to put Influence down. And we'll put that to 10. And Duration 10 again. Now the auto calculate, this is where you can have the game sort of check over your effects and decide what the best charge time and spell cost of it is. It doesn't always do a great job and especially if you make a magic effect which is something run by a script that the game can't read and understand then you are definitely going to want to auto calculate, untick that and just do it yourself. And the standard is sort of 0.5 for charge times. So this is how long you have to charge the spell up before you can release it and it actually fires something, otherwise it will just fail and you'll have to recharge it up. But you can make that longer if you want, if you feel like your spell is super powerful and needs to have a downside to it, then charge time is a good way of doing that. Uh, spell cost, this you have to take into consideration a number of things. The the main thing to take into consideration is the fact that you could have your casting per key can affect it, so this could be making it cost half as much. And you also have to take into consideration that maybe if a Breton is casting this, then Bretons are better with magic and can probably cast things half the sort of cost. So you have to take into consideration the balance that that might affect in the game. So you think that this is always going to cost 100 to cast, you're probably wrong and you might find out that it's going to be way too easy for people to cast and it might need to be like 200 or 220 so a good thing is to take a look at some of the spells in the game and see how they're sort of balanced out with their spell costs and copy them or you can just use the auto calculate and see how that works out for you i'm just going to click auto calculate and it's done something pretty fair i think to be honest and when you do write your description say if you've got some spelling errors you can do this little spell check here and it'll go through and do that for you because usually a lot of sort of the descriptions or things that you type out in other sections of the game it usually does a spell check automatically say when you're creating a book in items and you change something in the description it usually goes through and automatically spell checks but it doesn't do it for spells so they've added that in this menu here and uh, that is pretty much it for spells you'll also want to go ahead and place it onto a book I suppose I might as well cover that. Uh, you can obviously use a console command or you could have your spell added, like I say, via a book that you learn it from. Or you can have a number of other ways. You could use scripting and have a, a button that you activate or when you enter a tomb or during a quest somebody gives it you. You could do all of that if you wanted. We'll just do it the simple way. We'll go ahead and go OK. And we're going to find a destruction book. So find a basic destruction book, there we go, so it matches it. Now I'm going to change the ID, whoops, spell book, and this will be the name of the book, it's usually like a spell tome, and then whatever it is, we'll put epic spell, Uh, wait, not going to bother with that. And rather than skill, this is going to be spell, so it's going to be wherever our spell is. There it is, new spell. Text you don't really need when you're doing a spell book, when you're learning a spell, because you don't get to read it. And then the inventory art, well, this is all sort of copied from making a book. If you made a book from scratch and you've got all the hell of sort of finding the inventory art, finding the world art, so that your mesh actually appears in game, and it's just not worth the hassle. You just sort of uh, replace one, well, not replace, but make a duplicate of one of the game ones. So I'm just going to confirm that first and click yes because we want a new form of it. Refine that, open that back up. And if you want any scripts added to it, you can do that there. Keywords you can obviously add, we don't need to, it's all sort of set for that. Description, this isn't going to overwrite the description for like the spell or anything, this is just the, the book's description itself. Uh, I'll just put blah, so we can see the, the difference there. And that should be about it, click OK, and then we want to drag and drop that into our game somewhere, so I'm going to do it the most boring place. The one place I always just dump everything for testing, Riverwood. Put 
probably get a few errors here. Oh, there we go. And we'll dump it on a rock over here somewhere when everything's loaded. And we can learn how to spell that way. Like I say, you can be a bit more creative if you, you know what you're doing with other means to do things. And an extra little trick, if you don't know of this, is don't have it settle. That tick box alone never really works, and you have to add the sort of game's default script. Yes to all when this error pops up. And we just make sure our book doesn't go anywhere. Type in Havoc. Sable on Havoc load. Double click in there. Edit the values of the top two properties, but don't change them. Click OK. Don't want it to respawn. OK on there. Hopefully our book won't move at all. We can just go and grab it off the rock. And that's in our game. And then we want to go ahead and save that. So call that spell creation. Save that there. And now we will go in game and we will see our brand new spell working. Okay, so we are in good old boring Riverwood and as you can see there is my epic spell on the side and just to show that havoc sort of trick, uh, it won't move at all. But we'll pick that up, go into the inventory. Epic spell there, it's got sort of the, the book that we wanted, the description, this spell is epic, blah 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 blah, because I didn't remove that in the end and the value 200. Uh, that's another thing to mention is the value of the book also depends on if you've got it in a merchant's inventory then merchant stuff and other sort of perks generally tend to affect that so you have to be careful with balancing the game out there too. I've got better things and to the spell has been learned so if we go into magic we've got epic spell there and it's got that sort of banish menu display visuals that I was talking about and then the effect has been pulled off the fear magic effect so a thing to sort of do a bit of trial and error with is the magic effects sort of visual effects and sound effects being pulled I said that would be the top one in the list and the top one in the list should have been fire so it should have been the fire bolt so if you really have to then just make a duplication of that magic effect and then just remove all the visuals from it and get the actual sort of just damage from it and make sure that the there's only one magic effect in your list that has the visuals and sound that you actually want and it should pull it off that one so it's going to be a bit of trial and error like I say move them up and down the list or see what you can do with it and please don't leave comments like I have had on the other videos saying like how do I make this specific spell or this specific spell now, I can't really help you I haven't exactly got the time to help every individual on how to make specific spells and part of this is to sort of just play around with it and see what you can do and see what you can make uh, you can add scripts like I said in the last video to magic effects and you can have a lot of fun with that. The creation kit wiki will help you there. But if we just fire this, this should work as our aim spell. And we don't we don't want to hit anything as well. Just gonna get attacked otherwise. Uh, but yeah, that's it. That is how you create your very own spell, add it to a book, like I say, you can do all sorts of weird things with it. It's up to you to go and have fun with. And if you haven't seen that Magic Effects tutorial, I'll leave a link in the description. You can go and check that out first. I recommend it. And then you can sort of use what you learn there to apply to this sort of spell tutorial. So that's it. Uh, please go check out my main website, my anti-social websites, all the usual. Hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already. Uh, leave comments if you like the video and stuff. But like I say, I can't help with uh, very specific requests. So that's it. Thank you very much for watching and I'll speak to you next time.